Hey guys, what is up? It is Pizza of Prestige and welcome back to Building Prestige Heights in Planet Coaster. In this episode, we're gonna work a lot on the theming of this ride and we're gonna create a queue line that is actually pretty cool. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanna talk about two things first. The first thing is that I skipped a lot of footage, you know, building that entire tunnel that you see right there uh, with the windows where the coaster goes through. There were a lot of corrupted files and I didn't, you know, I, I tried to fix them, but I didn't really feel like it anymore because it was taking too much time. And that's why I realized, you know what, let's just create a new video on another PC uh, that might work better. And now you can actually see that this video is hopefully a little better quality than my other videos. Uh, it's now 1080p, 60 frames per second, and that time lapsed. And it does create a lot, you know, it, does cre it doesn't create a lot of files anymore, but it does create one really big file. Uh, but it just works out great. I can easily just edit it and make it a time lapse. So that's what I've been up to basically, just trying to fix the way I make my videos. And I think I got it on lockdown right now. So let's get into, um, that's what, that was pretty much what I wanted to talk about. So let's get into the episode right now. Uh, what you can see me do here is create a little bit of a holding area for the peeps. I want this to be an like an not really interactive, but I want the queue line already to give off sort of a um, an experience. You know, the full experience is going to be also walking through the queue line instead of with the blue wrath coaster just kind of waiting in the queue line like you normally do in many theme parks, uh, like Cedar Point, for example. You just like when you wait for your ride, you're just sitting there or standing there, like you know, on the fan against the fence or sitting on the fence and just checking your mobile phone or whatever you can do, you know, in your spare time because you're just waiting for like 30 minutes to get on a ride and it's not anything special to be in queue. And in Disney parks, for example, you do have like theme queues, which I really like. So I tried to recreate that in my park and I think it worked out great. Um, just keep in mind that this entire area is going to be underground so you won't be able to see any bit of it from the outside but you will only be able to see it from the inside and that's sometimes why I really screw up on the outside of the building because it really doesn't matter you won't be able to see it when this like this area is completed and that's because you know it's all going to be underground there's going to be rocks put on top of it um, but the inside is very important to me right now um, and it's very hard to kind of create <laughs> create inner chambers and theme them when you already put a roof on them and that's something that I have to stop doing because I do that every single time and it just creates like it, it's it's challenging because it just creates inefficiency you know it, this can be you know just theming this thing this chamber for example that we're in right now it would have been a lot faster if I wasn't inside of the chamber with a roof over my head uh, I must say that, you know, when you press T and you go into the free look view, that actually helps out a lot. Uh, you know, the gameplay, just the way you can place objects in free look mode is amazing. You can do, you know, you can just twist the camera in any direction you want and you can just place it wherever. But still, it's kind of choppy. Sometimes you just fly out of the building and you end up like all the way on the edge of the park. Um, because somehow you touch something in the background or something like that or the cursor actually snaps to something in the background and then you're kind of screwed so then you gotta you know scroll back to the park um, but that aside I think that you know the way that I'm trying to build my buildings right here you know underground I think uh, with a little more practice I can do it more efficiently but I think it's working out for now um, now what you can see here is you know, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm actually adding windows and that's very weird because, you know, it's going to be underground. So what are you adding windows for? But those windows are actually going to be gateways into seeing what you can't see from the outside, which are the inner chambers of this dungeon slash village underground area that you can go into when you enter the coaster. And you can't access the, the rooms, but you walk past them and that's basically just to kind of ease your mind a little bit you know you're, there's always something to explore when you enter the queue line of this coaster and even if there's a long queue i hope the peeps will be able to enjoy it now of course peeps don't think and they can't enjoy anything uh but i'm thinking from a realistic standpoint so if i were a guest in a theme park i wouldn't want to be on my phone waiting for you know my turn to ride the coaster i would be I, you know i want to experience like the rock and roller coaster or the tower of terror in disneyland i want to experience something while waiting for the ride and i think it's very important in this now adding lighting to this building uh, was kind of kind of difficult you know at, at night it becomes a lot easier to 
um, to create your lighting, of course, when it's night. Um, and what I have found is that you put when you put a lot of lighting in a room or you put a lot of lighting in one place uh, during the day and it turns night, the lighting can come out completely different from what you imagined it to be. I actually built something with a couple of torches and I thought it would look really cool and it looks pretty cool like, you know, during the daytime. And then it turns nighttime and it's just super bright. It's not it's not normal anymore. And so you really gotta, you know, what I suggest when you what you do when you're trying to put down lighting, do it at night because then you will see what the final product look, uh, looks like. And during the day, it will only look better because it's already kind of illuminated because of the sunlight. All right, so a couple of things that I don't like about the lights right here, the spotlights, is that there is no occlusion of uh, from the scenery. So basically, it just it shines and illuminates an object, but it also illuminates the object directly behind it. There's no shadows uh, from the lights. And that's something that I really don't like. I hope they fix that. I hope there's, you know, gonna be, maybe there's gonna be an option or something like that to turn it on and off, because I would expect it to be very hard on some systems, uh, you know, to create those dynamic shadows uh, made from the lighting. But I would really like to see that, because now when you look at this, you can actually see like a yellow, ish light right there on the right of the coaster track on the actual floor of the tunnel because you know the the spotlights kind of shine straight through the wall and they illuminate the tunnel as well which wasn't supposed to happen but it does happen so there's you know there's a lot of things that can be fixed about this game but i must say the way that we can play this i mean i'm creating right now an underground like castle system where you can you know where you have like these alleys and these uh, these chambers and houses and whatever and it's only early alpha well early alpha it's only alpha of the game and it's just you know I can't wait for the second alpha to come out uh, it's gonna be awesome there's also gonna be terrain imp to, uh, like implementations and when that's you know when that's actually in the game I think the game is gonna be a lot better just imagine all the possibilities that we have uh, to create hills and uh, you know, terrain hugging coasters and all that kind of stuff. That's going to be awesome. And I can't wait for that. Uh, now, right here, I'm, you know, it's it's kind of awkward sometimes to place these floors because you don't want them sticking through the wall. So I placed them a little bit away of it, uh, from it. So I had to fill up that space right there with uh, a couple of trims, uh, roof trims. But in the end, it kind of worked out. So, yeah, this is one of the chambers that I was talking about. So when you're in the queue line, the actual queue line, you can look through those windows right there. And you can see these creepy like skull on this wooden, well, what do you call it? Kind of a scaffold, I suppose. And there's going to be these lanterns around it that just kind of adds to the creepy feel. Because this is kind of going to be a de demonic coaster, you know? It's going to be like a haunted uh, castle. It's not really going to be like a, a spooky castle, like a haunted castle is in a theme park. But it needs to have that spooky ambience because, you know... You walk through the queue line and you only get the idea that you're in a haunted castle. You're not seeing any special facts or, you know, hearing anything that actually says that you are in a haunted castle until you, of course, ride the coaster. And the coaster is going to be have, having some sequences and that's impossible for the game. But I'm going to do that in, in like, post-editing for the actual final video of the coaster. When the coaster is finished, I'm going to do a special dedicated video just for that coaster. And in the post-editing of that video... I'm gonna put in some, you know, some sequence and some uh, audio effects and that kind of stuff, you know, some visual effects maybe. I'm not sure about that yet, um, but we'll have some sequences that the coaster goes through to make it a little more like it's an actual planned ride instead of just a simple coaster going through some scenery. And I think that's gonna be awesome. Now right here is one of the chambers that I really like. It's a lot of, you know, it's kind of a jungle of scenery pieces and that's, you know, one of the drawbacks to my building style is kind of just, you know, add as much detail as possible. And if, you know, it's if it's full, just add more. And <laughs> I got to plan out my scenery a little better. Uh, I'm working on it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to experiment a little bit in the, um, you know, in other sandboxes. And I think, you know, I, I got some pretty cool ideas. I'm actually going to make a, um, a tutorial. I actually recorded it already. I just got to... Um, commentated and it's basically a, a tutorial to create something pretty cool uh, that you could put you know like on a path but I'm not saying what it is until it's out um, so you can stay tuned for that uh, it's gonna be the like the video after this one before episode 13 but right here you know just adding a little more detail adding these little trims around the wall uh, just to make you know this wall seem less plain 
I really don't like to see like the big plain concrete walls or the stone walls that are just very simple. I kind of wanted to see an intricate stru uh, structure and that's kind of what I'm building here. And in the end, I think it's going to be very cool that when you're just, you know, walking up the stairs, you're looking at these windows like what is behind that and then you get up to the level and you see it and there's like a skeleton hanging and there's just creepy stuff everywhere. It just really, you know, it adds to the effect of the coaster and that's something I really like. That's really what I wanted to do with this um, this queue line right here. Alright, so, you know, if you have any suggestions on what the actual story of the coaster could be, because I have a general picture in my head, I'm not going to tell you yet of course because that would be spoiling it, um, but if you guys have any cool ideas on, um, you know, what you would like to see for a coaster, a themed coaster with a story and, you know, with a real background story, um, go ahead and tell me. I would really love to hear it, you know, just read it in the comments. Uh, I have been unable to reply to a lot of comments lately. Uh, I've been so busy with work, but, you know, I'm, I'm picking this back up now. I really enjoy doing this. That's also why I am doing it. So don't worry about me spending my time on it because, you know, it's just... I need to find the time sometimes and now I actually have so yeah uh, here just adding like the final piece of the entrance queue so the entrance queue actually starts out pretty wide which you can see here I'm just jumping from like um, subject to subject right here but this is really about the video uh, so I kind of want to stay with the video instead of going into the general stuff now this is the entrance of the um, the dungeon basically and what I want it to be is I want the, the like the entrance of it to be a cave and then at a certain moment you'll have some walls on the side and some wooden posts in there to keep it you know standing upright and then um, at a certain moment you enter like this this big tunnel sort of made of the castle walls and it will look kind of cool I hope uh, now right here just trying to add as much detail as possible to this little cave right here adding these rings uh, which I actually found out are exactly the same rings they're only scaled up but they are actually the exact same rings as they are on the hanging skeleton from the wooden beam that you can place on walls they are 100% they are the same they even have the exact same texture so it's pretty funny you know just um, I thought that they were for hanging horse well not hanging horses but like putting your horse up there uh, which they still could be about uh, you know, they still could be for that, but it kind of looks like it's used to hang subjects in uh, creepy basements. So, yeah, that's just a, a little something, but yeah, I guess we can work with that. Um, now, right here, just kind of finishing the... Uh, the walls on the coaster side of things uh, I decided you know what I spent a lot of time on this queue line let's also get some time on the coaster and that's when I decided you know what I'm gonna make a little facade in here and you know I want this to be kind of an area of the living and also an area of the dead and it's kind of gonna be combined it's like some kind of a really crazy um, nutcase from the medieval times it actually lives in this cave and actually made a reasonable home and I know this isn't medieval uh, the glass and like the the shutters on there but I mean it's it's something you know it's it's just a little sort of an ambience that I'm trying to create here um, like moving on from that ambience I'm really excited you know to basically create the the rest of this area and this area i'm not really sure what to put in this area as to flat rides if you have any ideas and like what flat, uh, flat ride you could see in such an area go ahead and tell me you know maybe um i haven't really experimented with them a lot i only place the ones that are in this actual park i never really played with them actually so i'm gonna experiment a little bit but you know if you have some cool ideas on what to add um, further on in this region, which is going to be the castle, of course. Go ahead and put it in the comments. You know, I want this to be, kind of be an interactive team effort thing because I don't want to be able to, uh, well, I want to be able to, but I, I can't really, um, you know, make up the entire park by myself, you know, in, in just a couple of episodes. You know, it's, it's really, sometimes it's just really difficult to get the right perspective on things and having another person's opinion really helps. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, now this this skull I really failed in trying to make it themed and in the end I think it actually these lanterns they actually worked out pretty nice uh, what you can see right here is these spotlights I put them in the eyes and you really can see the le the LEDs in there like the little red spots but I think the way that the red beams actually come out of it at night it looks very cool um, and it's kind of creepy it's kind of Terminator like uh, and it, you know it's 
it's just not perfect but you know you know who wants perfect in their in their park right um but i'm really happy with how it turns out now i'm really happy with these vines as well you can place them anywhere you want and i'm not sure if they're vines or seaweed or something like that um but they work out great on walls and i used them before i used them in the actually uh where did i use them i think i actually used them in the transition area with the plaza a little bit um where like the coaster shoots over and also maybe at the octopus right i don't really remember uh, i'll check into that but <laughs> i used it a couple of times and i'm really happy with how it looks now here you can actually see the hanging skeleton right there uh the ring that it hangs on i'm not sure if you can see that maybe you have to pause the video uh you know but it's exactly the same as the ring that i sometimes put on my walls to hang your horses and that's just you know well basically to put up your horses um but I suppose that's just the way it works. You know, it's... Whatever. Um, but yeah, that was basically this episode already. Wow, I'm just talking about nonsense. But you know what? I'm really excited for next episode. We're going to work some more on the theming. And it's going to be awesome. So I can't wait to see you guys there. And until then, peace. For Pieces of Prestige.